Hey there, my name is Lisa Mohaje and I am the founder of The Drab to Fab Life. We are talking about crushing that vicious cycle of dining out and wondering where in the world did my money go? Um, I actually was in the process of being very bitter and a little bit resentful about some financial decisions that we had made and I came to the conclusion that Lisa if you are not willing to do something different if you're not willing to do something about it then you have no right to be bitter or resentful about anything so I made the decision to do something different and that's how this all began so make sure you check out my other videos in this series how to get started with this and how to get your mindset right and and how to be prepared. So today we are talking about budgeting and tracking this new system. For a lot of people, this is brand new. It's, it's brand new to a lot of people about budgeting and tracking. Like, where do you even begin? Well, I'm going to keep it really, really simple. Um, and we'll just keep it at $100 per person in your household for groceries because we're not even talking about dining out yet. Um, so $100 per person in your household for groceries and you can set that amount based on your own personal household income but to keep things simple, <laughs> we're gonna keep it at $100. So the easiest way to do this is with an envelope and to just some good old fashioned cash, right? Cash is king, everybody loves cash. And when you have it in an envelope, you have a specific amount, you're gonna be more likely to stick to it. And I know with um, online banking and apps, it's really easy to track things there as well. Um, but let's just say for a household of three people, we're gonna put $300 cash into the envelope for groceries and then you can see I have also a column for fun money. So that might be your weekly family day, um, dining out, date night, whatever. Uh, for our household, we have one day a week where we are going to dine out, whether it's for a date night or family day, whatever that may be. And that amount will go into our fun money. <laughs> so every time that you go to the grocery store, this is really simple. Right, you've already got your meal plan, you've got your grocery 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 template list already printed out and ready to go. If you don't have that yet, make sure you click on the link um, so that you can access all of that information and have those tools available. Um, and you're gonna go to the grocery store, you're only going to buy the things that are on the list. Things that you need because we want to eliminate wasting food and wasting money. So um, so in this envelope, let's just say that you have $300 for groceries and $100 for fun money. You determine what that amount is. It's different for everyone and I totally get that. Most important thing is that your household, you and your spouse, your significant other, um, are in tune, in line with those amounts and are on board. I'm so thankful that when I presented this to Pa, she was like, yes, <laughs> let's do it. It makes things so much easier because if he was not on board, it would not work. <laughs> I was going to say, wouldn't it be as simple? But let's face it, it wouldn't work. You've, you've got to have your household on board with this so that everyone is excited about it. So every time that you go to the grocery store um, for the week, maybe you spent uh, $99.50 for groceries the first time that you went for that week. And again, you have $300 in there to spend for groceries. So you just keep marking it off and that's how you're going to track. Now, if you go over the $300 in your groceries, whatever that amount is for you, if you go over that amount, it's gonna come from your fun money. So you're gonna to have to subtract $25, $50, however much you went over in groceries, it's coming out of your fun money. Um, and that's how we're gonna do that. So that's how you're going to track your, your budget. Um, I'm looking over my notes here just to make sure that um, I have that covered. Um, the other thing is really just staying strong, guys, and remembering why you're doing this. Um, remembering that 
it's going to take your whole household to stay on track with this because there's going to be times where you're like, oh man, I really just want to go for Chinese food. I just want to go for pizza. I don't feel like cooking. But the more you can be prepared and the more everyone is on board, the more you can keep each other accountable. So for, for Paj and I, for example, there might be a day where I'm like, oh, I, I, are you sure you don't want Korean barbecue? And he's like, Lisa, remember, we're dining out at home. Um, the other day we were tempted, and this was our very first week with this system, we were going to stop at Starbucks and sit outside on the patio. And I agree that it's okay to do that every once in a while. Um, what we are attempting to eliminate is doing that three to five times a day. <laughs> Um, and then we were like, well, maybe we should just go to Cracker Barrel or maybe we should go do this. We had been out um, running some errands, things like that. And we both came to the decision. We sat in the parking lot at Starbucks. We didn't get out of the car and we both made the decision simultaneously to just go home and eat the food that we had at home. So make sure that you have an accountability system. Make sure that you and your spouse, your significant other, um, your roommate, whatever it might be, make sure that you guys both know like, hey, if I suggest going out to Mama's Pizza, I need you to remind me that we are on a budget and that we're eating out at home. I don't know why I keep saying eating out at home, dining out at home, that we are eating at home. We're not going to spend our money on X, Y, and Z. And sometimes it helps also to have a financial goal. Like, what are you saving money for? Are you trying to pay off debt? Are you trying to get a new house? Are you trying to get a new car? Are you trying to save up money for a vacation? Whatever that may be, sometimes having that goal that you know that you're working towards is going to help. And guys, I just have to say, um, when I first started this, I kept thinking, I got to make more money. I got to make more money. And then I was like, let me take a look at our smaller um, expenses. If you are looking to earn more money, if you're looking for additional income, even if it's just a part-time income, that is part of what I do with the Drab to Fab Life. I train women on how to earn an income working from home, um, focusing on becoming a better version of themselves and simply sharing that with other people. So if you are somewhere in your life that you feel like, you know what, I really just need to make a little bit of extra money. I would love to earn a part-time income um, in addition to my full-time income while working from home, while helping other people and just simply sharing your journey. Of so if this sounds like something that you might even be interested in a slight bit, definitely reach out to me, message me, head over to my website, lisamohaje.com to learn more about what it is that my team stands for, about the team training, about how I'm going to support you and help you, whether your goal is to earn a couple extra hundred dollars a month or maybe you want to earn six figures. It doesn't matter. Let's hop on a call. Let's go over your goals and let's figure out, is this even a good fit for you? I'll talk to you soon.